Hello, and welcome to another Bionicle summary. In this series, I'll be summarizing Bionicle characters' storylines, toys, and even their appearances in other media. Today's episode will be about the supposed Pomatoran actual great being, Velika. Hope you enjoy. During the Core War, the great beings, the ruling class of Cirrus Magna, were renowned for their inventing prowess. Throughout their dealings with the newfound substance Energized Protodermis, as well as their own creations, the Elemental Lords, the great beings eventually realized that their planet was doomed to, ca to experience a catastrophic explosion as a result of the Civil War. Though they disagreed on how to deal with the impending disaster, they eventually created a giant mechanoid named Mad Nui, who would repair the damage after observing extraterrestrial cultures and returning with the information. During the creation of the robot, the great beings created Trend Krom to sustain the universe before the robot was actually powered. To maintain the robot, the great beings created a set of diminutive workers known as Matoran. Now, this great being was curious about the robot's inner workings and how Matt knew he would perform in his task. He announced to the other great beings that he would go into exile so as to remove suspicions, then transferred his consciousness into the body of a Pomatoran, leaving his body somewhere in suspended animation, and entered the robot. He began using the Pomatoran's name, Velika, as a pseudonym and did not use his true name in the Matoran universe because some of the earliest creations of the great being might have known their names, and he wanted his presence to remain a secret. He then began to observe the workings of the universe. The planet eventually did explode in an event known as the Shattering, and Velika chose to remain within the Great Spirit Robot. He remained in contact with various agents on the remnants of Spheres Magna, including Kabura, Perditus, and Atticus who reported events on the shards of Cirrus Magna to him. Velika was re later responsible for Atticus receiving Skrull tribal design blades made with the prototype technology by the Great Beings. Soon after Madanui's launch, Velika caused the nanotechnology inhabitants to develop into a sophisticated culture of artificial intelligence. Velika was at one point sent to Karzani, the realm designated for repairing broken workers, in order to have a problem with his body fixed. He was rebuilt but in a new weakened form. To compensate for this, Karzani, the ruler of the realm, bestowed Velika with a pair of power carvers. Nevertheless, Karzani remained disgruntled with his failure to properly repair Matoran, and sent Velika with other similarly fixed Matoran to the distant island of Voyanui, which at the time was a landlocked region of the southern continent. During the Great Cataclysm, Voyanui was torn from its place in the southern continent and ended up as a drifting island on Aquamagna. The Motoran's Taraga Joven was killed in the upheaval. Velika and the Motoran struggled for survival for the duration of the Dark Time. Approximately 500 years ago, a hurricane struck Voyanui, but no Motoran were killed. Several months ago, the six Baraka arrived in Toa canisters, claiming to be Toa. Velika was put in charge of a group of Motoran to build a stronghold for them. Velika met with five Motoran, including Garen, who had grown suspicions of the Baraka, who became the Voyanui resistance team. As their first action, Velika stole a Zamor launcher from Avac, and Dalu used her chargers to keep Avac from pursuing him. The resistance team analyzed the charger and determined it to be a weapon, heightening the suspicions of the Paraka. Soon Garen and Balta discovered the Paraka were not Toa, and were on Voyanui to steal the Kanoia Nika. Before they could warn the rest of the Matoran, however, the Paraka ambushed and enslaved the rest of the Matoran population with Antidermis. At some point, Velika discovered a pool of energized protodermis on the island and told the resistance team that the substance could free the Matoran from the slaving effects of antidermis. The resistance team sent Balta to steal a Zamor sphere from Vezok. While the group hid, waiting for Balta to return with the Zamor, they noticed flashes of ice and fire from a skirmish between the Toa Nuva and the Paraka. The Toa Nuva were defeated by the Paraka, who took their tools and the Kanoe Nuva. The resistance team later encountered the Toa Nuva and treated them with hostility, having already been fooled by the Paraka. However, something that should be noted is that Velika was, for all intents and purposes, knowledgeable about what a Toa looked like. I mean, he helped build them. So, it does raise an interesting question on how he did not steer the conversation away from essentially all of this. I mean, he, he knew the Paraka were Paraka, and he knew the Toa were Toa. He could have used this knowledge. <laughs> I guess for some reason he figured his cover was more, uh, more important. So, 
They battled the Toa Nuva before Balta arrived, bringing news that the six Toa Nuva were speaking the truth. The Toa and Matoran then joined forces. To recover the Toa Nuva's possessions, the group headed to the Paraka stronghold, to which they gained access by tricking Radak into destroying the door. Radak ran inside to warn the other Paraka, and the group infiltrated the stronghold. They were able to recover the Toa Nuva's Kinohi, Nuva, and Toa tools, and then challenged the Paraka. However, the Matoran and the Toa Nuva were knocked unconscious by the Paraka's new ally, Brutaka. Valika and the Matoran were then taken for the Paraka for questioning, while the Toa were taken by Brutaka. Velika was interrogated with the other Matoran in the Chamber of Truth. They later managed to escape and encountered the new Toa Anika in the wilds. After making an alliance, the Resistance team and the Toa Anika made plans to cure the infected Matoran of the Antidermis virus. Velika manufactured new Zamor launchers and gave them to the Toa Anika to aid in this effort. The Matoran and Toa then split into three groups. Velika went with Garand, Kongu, and Naparu to the Paraka stronghold to look for the Toa Nuva. Outside the stronghold, they were attacked by Nan Nakan, which Naparu defeated with Velika's advice. Inside the stronghold, the group found the Toa's masks and tools, but they did not find the Toa Nuva and believed them to be dead. Then the other two teams arrived, and the Toa Nika confronted the Paraka. While the Toa and the Paraka were fighting, the Voya Nui resistance team, separated from the Toa Nika, began to search for the Toa Nuva. Velika led them through the stronghold for some time, while the Toa Nika and Paraka left the stronghold to find the Kanoe Nika. <laughs> Velika eventually found the Toa Nuva in a room that was not in his original forlore plans, and the Torn freed them. The resistance team led the Toa Nuva to recover their masks and tools and informed them of the Toa Nika. Axon soon appeared and led the Toa Nuva and resistance team to meet the Toa Nika in the beach. The Toa exchanged farewells before both teams finally left for different locations. The Toa Nuva to Metra Nui, where Axon had told them they would find further instructions, and the Toa Nika down to the Cord to deliver the Nika to the place where it needed to save the life of Mata Nui. Axon promised to protect the Matorna of Voya Nui from the Paraka and any other dangers. Shortly after, the Toa Mari prepared to destroy the Cord to help awaken Mata Nui. Axon gathered the Matorna of Voya Nui into the Nui Caves to survive Voya Nui's descent. They were joined by the Matoran of Mari Nui, who had been gathered by the Toa Mari, and taken up the cord. Velika and the Matoran were able to survive the descent safely, and then emerged to live on the southern continent yet again. Mata Nui died and was resurrected by the sacrifice of Toa Matoro. However, Teradax usurped control over the robot from Mata Nui, and exiled Mata Nui into space. He ruled over the Matoran universe for some time before traveling to Bera Magna to defeat Mata Nui. In the course of the battle, Manui killed Teradax and toppled the Great Spirit Robot, rendering the Matoran universe uninhabitable. He then successfully restored Spheris Magna. At this point, Velika, with all the other inhabitants of the Matoran universe, migrated to the newly restored Spheris Magna. During his time as a Matoran, Velika, having concluded that the destruction of the planet was due to poor leadership by the Great Beings, developed a plan to seize control of Cirrus Magna for himself. Part of his plan involved the killing of powerful Matoran universe inhabitants acting outside of their parameters, which might object to his rule. Velika defeated Lezevic and stole his air sword, with which he killed Karzani at the Iron Cannon, and extracted Trincrom from his prison before murdering him in Boda Magna. Velika killed both in gruesome ways to inspire fear among the population, which he planned to use to ensure his acceptance as a ruler. Due to his alliance with Kabura, Velika knew about the Voroks on Bota Magna. Planning to use them as shock troops, Velika gave them sophisticated force blasters and a device capable of blocking Atoa's elemental powers. He also told them of regression and tragedy of the Bara Magna Voroks. Velika then directed them to capture and kill a group of Toa and Glatorian who were in the process of tracking down the Great Being to inform them of Cirrus Magna's restoration. Velika also took advantage of an opportunity to take Axon, Brutaka, Miserix, Tuyet, Helerix, Vezon, and Artaka out in one fell swoop, as they had gathered in one place at the behest of an insane great being. He rigged the structure to blow and then cra began crafting a grave marker for his intended victims. The group of the Matoran universe inhabitants managed to escape, and unbeknownst to them, the cursed being escaped as well. Now this is the end of the story, as of now. 
However, Greg has revealed a couple more things in his plans, including the fact that Velika might try to recruit the elemental lords as lieutenants to who rule their tribes in his name. Along with Velika hoping to make the Toa Nuva his allies in hopes that it would prevent a Matoran rebellion due to the respect and honor they possess. Interesting stuff. In the Kingdom alternate universe, the Great Being never chose Velika's body as a host, and as a result he became a Toa. Furthermore, it's been deduced that the Great Being probably chose another Metronui Matoran in Velika's steed. In the Melding alternate universe, he never had to go into hiding and as a result was one of the six great beings who met Vesica and Voltraz. He was curious about Voltraz's alignment. As a result, he and the other great beings took Voltraz for study, giving Mazika a choice of anyone he wanted. Mazika, of course, chose the light pterodax and left. Velika, like other great beings, is quite arrogant, believing himself to be smarter than everyone else around him. He believes that the great beings were too weak in their governing of Spherus Magna and that the shattering could have been prevented. Somehow this leads to him wanting to control and rule Spherus Magna himself, and he is perfectly okay killing any of the Matoran universe inhabitants and innocents. He also believes that he's doing the right thing in all of this. While residing in the Matoran universe, Velika had a habit of speaking in riddles. The insight he provided through his riddles and fables helped many times in the liberation of Voi Nui. His team member Kazi, however, found the riddles and fables to be highly annoying and this led to some very interesting banter between the two. Velika had a passion for creating and inventing, another trait of his original species, was translated into the job of a crafter and engineer in the Matoran universe. He was skilled with technology and created the multiple shot Zamor launchers for the Toei Neka, based on the design of a regular Zamor launcher stolen from the Paraka. Velika also had a hand in creating the Bataria, and may have also had a part in creating Mirander. Because of the shift in his body, he's stronger than the average Matoran. However, due to his rebuilding by Karzani, he became way weaker. After his return to Spheres Magna, he kept the body. However, he plans to get his old one back. Despite being a Matoran body, Velika could not be revived on the Red Star, as it was not equipped with the technology to transfer non-artificial consciousness to a new body. Velika was released in early 2006 as one of the six small Matoran sets consisting of 21 pieces. He included a Kamau and power carvers. He could be bound with Balta and Pyrrhic to make a Lava Hawk. Velika was a minor character in most of the story up until the end of the line. He came up in the first three Voynui books and the fifth book. He also made an appearance in the first comic of the year. He appeared in the serials Brothers in Arms, The Yesterday Quest, and The Powers That Be. He also showed up in the short story The Kingdom, and made cameos in the Paraki Online animations. Velika appeared in the fan favorite Voya Nui Online game. He was also a mass produced NPC in the Paraka Attack game, and also got an appearance in the Anika Island game and was a player in Matoran Escape. Fan reception was neutral from what I could tell. He had some good parts, including Anua's mask and Winua's weapons. Both were really good sets of parts, however, there really wasn't much going on with it. I mean, he was mostly just a re-release of parts, a small parts kit. Velika is a small meme just due to him being a great being and hiding on the GSR. However, I personally wish his meme status was more in regard to his funny quips in the Voinui novels between himself and Kazi. Now there's some nice trivia on Velika, as he was stated to be Greg Farshley's favorite Matoran of 2006. Now his original story wasn't really meant to be a great being. However, after the reveal that a known Matoran Universe resident was actually a great being in disguise, Greg Farshti held a contest on BZ Power for fans to guess the identity of this great being. Popular candidates included Helrix and Kapura. The contest was abandoned after Farshti was no longer able to update the story serials. However, he was later revealed through other means. So, whether he was originally just meant to be that fun, quippy Matoran, or he was actually a great being from the start, is debatable. Yeah. Oh, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that very long, painful process of me speaking out the entire backstory of this guy. Um, yeah, if you liked it, uh, feel free to subscribe, hit that like button, ring that bell because YouTube decided not to fix the subscription button like they should have, and uh, maybe support us on BitChute. That'd be great. Uh, adios.